Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In today's episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7B Torque practice problem. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to subscribe and leave a like on this video. It helps our channel a lot. So let's just go ahead and read the problem. So we have a meter stick that is resting on a sharp edge of a triangular support and it's placed 20 centimeters from one end of the meter stick as shown in the picture. Uh, it is balanced in the position shown by a hanging block from one end of the stick as shown. So the two things that we have to figure out is A, find the mass of the block and B, find the force by the triangular support on the meter stick. All right. So as you can see, I've written down all of the uh, relevant information here on my notes. So basically we have um, 0 0.2 meters. Oh, everything, I changed everything into um, meters. And also, uh, even though the problem does not explicitly say this, they do say that this is a meter stick. And a meter stick is basically a ruler that measures exactly one meter. So the length of a meter stick is one meter. And that is how I was able to figure out that if this is uh, 0 0.2 meters, then this distance has to be equal to uh, 0 0.8 meters. And that is basically all that I've done up to this point. Okay, so the way in which I like starting these torque problems is by drawing an extended force diagram. So let's just go ahead and do that. So the first uh, force that kind of jumps to our eyes is the force due to this mass. So I'm just going to go ahead and put an arrow over here. And I'm just going to call it force by mass. I don't really know the magnitude of this because in order to uh, figure out the magnitude, I would need the mass and that is exactly what I'm trying to figure out. But I'm just going to go ahead and call it force by mass. Now we do have another force exactly here at the middle. And that is because this meter stick, it has some weight to it. So because it has some weight to it, uh, gravity is acting on it. So force by gravity. And we actually can figure out the value of this force because that would just be the uh, mass of the meter stick times 10, which is G. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So that would be 1.2 Newtons going down. Now this uh, meter stick, per the instructions, is not moving and it is also not rotating. Now the fact that it is not moving in space, what does that mean? Well if it's not moving in space, delta V is equal to zero, which means that delta P is equal to zero. And because delta P is equal to F net delta T, if the meter stick is not moving in space, that basically means that the net force is equal to zero, which means that if you add all of your forces, they have to add up to zero. Now, as you can very clearly see, this is not the case right now. We do have two forces, but they are going in the same direction. So these two are clearly not going to balance out. So we are missing a third force, uh, which part B of this problem is kind of hinting at as well, because we do have to find it. So the third force is going to be forced by pivot on the meter stick. And it has to be, you know, big enough that it can counteract this too. So I'm just going to go ahead and write that down. Obviously, if I don't have this magnitude, then I can't figure out this magnitude, but we will eventually. It is part B of this problem. Now, the other thing that we know is that this thing is not rotating around the pivot point. So this, this thing not rotating around the pivot point means that there is no angular velocity which means that uh, there is no change in angular momentum. And angular momentum is equal to net torque times delta t. So if the thing is not rotating around a pivot point, that basically means that your net torque, well, among other things, but in, in this case, uh, the useful information that we get out of this is that the net torque has to be equal to zero. So these are two very important pieces of information that we're supposed to get from this problem. So let's just see how we can, you know, make use of them. So starting with part A, I need to figure out what the force by this mass is. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this information, balancing out the torques in order to figure this out. 
So my net torque has to be equal to zero. Out of these three forces, how many forces are generating a torque? Well, we know that the equation is RF sine of an angle, which in this case, this angle is going to be 90 for all of this problem. All of the forces are exactly uh, perpendicular to the moment arms. But out of these three forces, only these two are generating a torque. Force by pivot is not generating a torque because R is equal to zero. This force is being applied exactly at the pivot point. So the only two forces that we have going on are force by mass, which is going to generate a torque by mass. And the other force is uh, the torque due to gravity. And they have to add up to zero. Now, uh, the next thing that I have to do is be very, uh, you know, mindful that these torques are going in different directions. If you use your right hand rule, this force right here is generating a torque going out of the page. And this torque right here is generating a torque going into the page. This means that whenever I'm, um, you know, rewriting these two in terms of RF sign, I need to say that one of them is positive and one of them is negative so that they can indeed cancel out. Because if both of them were positive and bo or both of them were negative, they wouldn't cancel out, which is how I knew right away without even do using my right hand rule that uh, they just had to be going in on opposite directions. Otherwise, it just doesn't make sense. So anyway, uh, the first one is going out and out is positive uh, in the standard convention. Feel free to switch them out. Just be mindful that if you switch it out, you have to switch it out on the entire problem. Uh, which is something that I just don't recommend and I just don't do it that way. I just stick to the convention. Uh, so torque by mass is equal to um, R, which R is just the distance from the pivot point to this uh, mass. So that would be 0 0.2 meters times force by mass, which we don't know, but we're trying to figure it out. And then this one is going in, so this is negative. Um, this distance right here, so this would be r to the gravity vector. So if this, this entire thing is one meter, and then this chunk right here is 0 0.8 meters, and you know that this is at the center, so this is 0 0.5 meters, then that means that this distance over here has to be equal to 0 0.3 meters. So this is 0 0.3 meters, this is 0 0.2 meters. There we go. So let's just make sure to put that in our extended force diagram. Um, remember that a complete extended force diagram has force vectors and has uh, distances on it. So now this force diagram is extended force diagram is complete. So this is 0 0.3. Uh, force by gravity, we already know that that is just 1.2 and this has to be equal to zero. So force by uh, mass, this is equal to, let's see. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.3 times 1.2 divided by 0 0.2. Uh, 0 0.3 times 1.2 divided by 0 0.2 would be equal to 1.8. Now, the question was not asking me uh, to find the force by the mass. It was asking me to find the mass of the mass, right? So, um, so this is equal to 1.8, but just by definition, this is also the mass of the mass times g. So if this is equal to 1.8 and g is equal to 10, the mass is just going to be equal to 1.8 divided by 10. So the mass of the block or the mass or whatever is just going to be 0 0.18 kilograms. Final answer. We need always, we need to be mindful what this problem is asking us. You know, it would be a shame. Some people got this far and said, this is the final answer. And it's just something that it's almost tragic really, because I mean, all you had to do was just one more step. But again, being able to read a problem is very essential in physics. 
So let's just go ahead and do part B. So part B is asking us to find the pivot force, uh, which is, we already know that this is zero, no, that this is 1.8, I'm sorry. This is a force, this is not a mass. And we need to find force by pivot. So we already use this information, so it just seems natural that now we have to use this information. The net force has to be equal to zero, which means that a force going up minus this force going down, remember, different signs because we have different directions, minus this force going down has to be equal to zero. So that just means that force by pivot, if everything is to stay, you know, stationary, that just has to be equal to uh, three newtons going magnitude and direction. So there we go, 3 newtons going up. So this solves this problem. I hope that you find uh, this little introduction to torques. Well, I'll, I'll let you know, this was an actual final exam problem. But anyways, I hope that you found this, uh, you know, this practice problem useful. If you did, again, leave a, leave a like and subscribe. It helps our, our channel tremendously. If you have any suggestions for our channel, uh, we're happy to take them. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.